right, so you guys wanted to know differences in between the baddest big block based dry, drag and drive engine, 4,500 plus horsepower, proven the fastest drag and drive engine out there, period. Tom Bailey, 577, 260 mile an hour. Drag and drive after 1,000 plus miles and went and got uh, food, at, went and got lunch after we went 577, 260 with the car. To the SML, the baddest LS based small block drag and drive engine, soon to be proven out. I know what it'll do because I know what it'll do. Uh, anyways, in Jason Sachs' car, the next one we're going to be doing uh, that you'll see. Go back, you'll see a couple links here of the uh, Jason Sachs engine on the dyno. He's finishing up the car right now, and uh, we'll be out testing that thing. But I thought you'd like to see differences. Outside of the physical dimension, this engine, as is, completely dressed. Now, this is a used engine. This one is uh, Todd Bilesma's engine it's he's brought it back in for a freshen up it's all fresh we're getting ready to send it back out to him today so that's why this one's used this one is for vengeance racing it's gonna be a really bad piece right here so this one is brand new haven't dyno or tested it yet this the smx 602 pounds 4500 plus horsepower basically let's say 5000 horsepower okay this sml 396 pounds 3500 horsepower plus excellent very very cool actually i'm a little surprised that it's this that it's this light the only difference that would be in the in between these two is this does have uh injectors in it that's about it so i don't know maybe uh this thing's probably weighs like 598 this weighs 396 so basically uh 200 uh 200 pounds different just almost identical so you can see uh, overall size dimension obviously that's uh, uh, pretty obvious you can see these are the intake manifolds I actually am one of the first ones if not the first one because we did these this style intake manifold right here uh, for a big block Chevrolet uh, for a customer of ours out in England back in 2000 and uh, or no, let's see, 2000, I think it would have been 2011 or so, 2010, 2011. We did this whole intake manifold design and shape. Now, oh, everybody's got it. Um, but anyways, now these are dual fuel, both engines for drag and drive are dual fuel. You can set it up a couple different ways. Race injectors, street drive injectors, two separate fuel systems. So both intake, or this intake manifold is a three injector per cylinder. We can run all three on one in, or all three at the same time or run dual fuel, which is street drive race. You go over to the SML race street drive. Now, I only have two injectors per cylinder on the SML because in that 3500 plus horsepower range, a single injector on methanol works great. In a 4500 horsepower plus, a single injector is too small. So we need to have two injectors to make the big horsepower on the big block stuff. Um, let's see here. Then we could go. I think what we'll do now, you basically see the whole engine. You can see build up on this on the Jason Sack videos with respect. You can see some good build up videos on this in my wagon or on Clark's or on Bailey's. I mean, I have several build up videos. We'll try to put a couple links here or put a couple links down in the description for you guys on both of these. So let's show you some of the internal parts. They're crazy different too. Why this thing weighs 200 more pounds? Obviously it's bigger. And we'll show you the bare block, bare billet block, bare billet cylinder heads. But let's check out these crankshafts. This, now this is a spline drive uh, SMX crankshaft, Bryant billet. This is, this is bad, mo this is bad dude right, <laughs> right here. Um, very nice, super expensive. Uh, 5,000 horsepower kind of crankshaft. This is the SML crankshaft. Now you go back to those SML build-up videos and you see that we have uh, Cleveland main bearings on this, so it's a larger main bearing. The SMX crankshafts have a Hemi rod journal for a bigger connecting rod. We needed a bigger main bearing on the SML, so that's why it's a Cleveland. This is a standard big block Chevrolet. Cleveland size, and that means Ford Cleveland size, not a GM LS size. 
and standard uh, pin uh, small block Chevrolet right here, so two one hundred. But this is a Cali's Cali's billet crankshaft, Cleveland, Maine. Uh, I do these in four inch stroke and three seven fifty stroke for the SMLs, and in the SMXs we do four five hundred stroke, four two fifty stroke, and four one twenty five stroke. Uh, those three different sizes. Let's go back and check out the blocks and the cylinder head. So I'm showing you all the major comparison stuff. Uh, you can go back and you look at pistons, rods, stuff like that. Not a big deal. Oh, I think I'll show you the valves too. You'll get a kick out of that. All right, now here we are at cylinder heads. These are cylinder heads that we've gotten done making. Brock's been making them. These are SML heads. These are SMX heads back here. All right. So difference in that. Here is your SML head. Here is your SMX head. Notice, <laughs> larger. Okay, this is a extremely good uh, cylinder head, obviously. Now, what we always do, I'm always on, on everybody that I am not a NA engine guy. Used to be, but I'm not an NA engine guy and I'm definitely not a NA cylinder head porter. Uh, if this this head is not the best flowing cylinder head in the universe it is not this is not the best flowing cylinder head in the universe it is not these are horsepower making mothers under boost that last that live that allow you to make more boost will they make a uh, 10 horsepower more than every cylinder head in the world absolutely not will they last better than almost any cylinder head in the world absolutely they will okay so that's a little bit of ground there are the and what is major differences here water jacketing this is not just some solid uh ls cylinder head that you can just bolt on it is not because you cannot bolt this onto a standard ls because our head bolt pattern is different half inch head studs all the way around in a symmetrical pattern everything is moved you cannot bolt this head on an ls block okay show you valves that is a 2250 1600 titanium intake valves that are in here valves on the smx smx same thing water jacketed this is not just a some solid billet head made for pro mod or nitro methane cars or top alcohol or whatever this is made to drive thousands of miles and race and make 4500 horsepower plus that is a very rare thing I don't really know anything that does that besides these. Um, here you can see, now this is a 2440 valve and 1920 valve. Like to see the difference here? Ba-ding! Kind of do it like this. Now you have all this extra length because you need to have, uh, the, the port is taller, it's physically larger dimension. Uh, these ports, like, I guess if you guys want to know full numbers, this is basically like 380-ish CFM, 380 CFM. This is uh, pretty close to 500 CFM. All right. Uh, very nice piece. But again, we're not going for maximum cylinder head flow. That is not the point of a boosted engine. Uh, beneficial? Yeah. In the most important? No. Because it doesn't matter how good it flows. If you can't keep a push rod on it, you can't keep a rocker arm in it, if you can't uh, or if you're blowing through because it's too thin, doesn't hold a head gasket, who cares? The thing has to last, has to live at these horsepower levels. So, you can see, big valves, titanium lightweight, this fire hoop. I don't have the fire hoops in this yet. You can see we don't have the seats in these yet. These are brand new off the machine, both of these. There's no seats, no guides. I have to go through and do finish work. Here's the top half of the cylinder heads don't have any like I said don't have any of the guides in there notice how big the exhaust guide is because I have that those custom guides that I make specifically for these applications that have been proven out to last better not grab valves control the valve stem motion much better and drag and drive applications not NA not pro modified nit nitro methane cars whatever drag and drive okay so cylinder heads there is your difference there super cool stuff going on um same thing same thing with the smx heads symmetrical half inch head studs all the way around okay half inch head stud inside the intake port right here right there same thing with the 
SML head. That head stud goes right through the intake port and then is accessed right there. Here, they're accessed right there through that plug. All right. Now, that's the basics here. We go over to blocks. Now, here is the SML block. Again, fully water jacketed. Are there other blocks out there like this? Not exactly like this, guaranteed. This is the only one. Are there billet block, billet LS blocks all over the place? Everybody's got their own solid billet LS block for drag racing. That's cool, whatever. But this is fully water jacketed, meant for drag and drive, meant to go thousands of miles and make 3,000 or 3,500 plus horsepower. You can see how uh, we keep some things all the same. Uh, so some things are a little universal 55 millimeter roller bearing so it still uses utilizes a standard LS camshaft standard LS componentry up here but work really hard at making sure that we have all this massive amount of material around the cylinder bores to support the cylinder sleeves water comes in through here goes all the way through this channel crosses over in the back comes up through the middle, I'm sorry, into the middle of the block right here, runs through this whole channel, and then out right here. All right, 904 lifter, works on a tie bar setup, 55 millimeter camshaft, Cleveland, Maine. Really nice, good thick sleeve with that altered head bolt pattern for maximum cylinder head clampage so you don't have uh, the typical LS head gasket issue. Big horsepower, big boost, gaskets blow out, loose sleeves. Splayed main caps. These splayed studs go into the bulkhead. Front and rear. Whoop, right into here. Right into the bulkhead that meet in the in the side of the block. Instead of just having a cross bolt right here, actually angled so it relies on tension, not shear. All right, so we got that. Um, what else we got? Oh, still does accept the stock. Uh, LS oil pan, stock LS uh, front, stock LS, and a little slightly modified rear cover because I do have some changes there. Priority oiling, just like a common piece. All right, now we go over to the SMX block. Obviously, you see the size difference, the mass difference. Same basic thing. The water goes along the outside, right through here, crosses over comes up through the inside all the way through here then comes out the front all right utilizing some stock componentry or standard stock is not the right term some standard componentry from a 481x platform the solid motor okay now you see our sleeves here too we have that really big uh nice cylinder head bolt pattern on here too just works excellent we have we have you know, a few years of history on these now. They will hurt uh, a piston or a rod if the tune-up's wrong and has not ever hurt the head gasket as of yet. That doesn't mean it won't, but as of yet, it really is doing well. This area right here, I bore this larger because I like to have this big step sleeve. This first inch and a half of cylinder material right here is very thick uh, in the iron sleeve because that's where the, the mass amount of cylinder pressure is at, is in that first inch and a half, probably down in there at two inches range. And then it dissipates quite a bit, all right? So you have the water, you got the sleeves, 65 millimeter camshaft. This is a Babbitt bearing deal versus a roller bearing deal. Trying to figure out, uh, there is no good bearing, there is no bearing that is a 65 millimeter Torrington style uh, cage bearing for for this I have to go down to 60 millimeter which changes all of my stuff so I'm trying to figure out what we can do uh, currently I'm not going to do that because the Babbitt bearing is working well but it would be in my opinion a little bit better to do it with the Torrington style roller bearing uh, that's the little flat uh, flat cage style bearing um, so you can see that same thing here on the billet caps I don't have the caps on this block right now but Splayed these bolts on the outside splays go all the way into right up into the cylinder bores in between the cylinders in this great big beefy meat area. And like I said, and showed you those crankshafts for it. 
a large core camshaft and we do this i do this with a tie bar 904 lifter the reason i do have a reason for doing that um, if you ever wanted to see that this is a good place too we'll put a link down below to my lifter video in my steve tech section if you go to my playlist go to the steve's tech session steve tech session section there we go section go to there and uh you'll see i have a whole bunch of stuff on piston rods crankshafts sleeves blocks camshafts valve train all sorts of really good tech information i'll tell you ex exactly why we do a 904 uh, tie bar style lifter in this particular engine versus like a uh, a keyway lifter or something like that all right so that is the primary differences you can see some really cool stuff here uh, on the blocks the differences in between 3500 horsepower 4500 horsepower plus engine packages really light 396 pounds complete that's really good and 598 pounds basically complete with this if you took the injectors out of that one engine um that is that's really cool um that's a lot of horsepower per weight ratio especially on the on the small block one on the ls based stuff so anyways uh let's go over i'll show you the next thing that's coming up on the next video wagon is on the hub dyno all right back. wagon is back on the hub dyno I'm going to try to get this run today. It might be tomorrow. Um, but this will be probably the next video coming out on Thursday, which will be, I don't know, 24th or something, I think. Because we have that top secret torque converter in here. If you want to see that, here's the link. The, the, or you can go back and look. There's a couple videos uh, about that. And I uh, still can't tell you about it. Um, some of you are pretty close in your guesses of what it is. Some of you are so far off, I don't even know what you're thinking. Um, but uh, we're going to be rerunning this at a higher horsepower level uh, because uh, Marty Chance wants to see what the converter is doing. And then after we do that, then we're going to go test it. Um, we'll take it to the track and probably do some testing before drag week. Even though I'm not taking this on drag week. Remember, I'm going with Jason Sack and the Cowboy Up Nova with the SML over there for drag week. So this is coming up for the last one. Remember, like, subscribe, share your vi these videos as much as you can. I see our uh, video viewing has just plummeted, just gone way down. So if you guys really like this, help us out with the algorithms and uh, you know, like, uh, comment, and share. I think is probably one of the main things and get other people to open it up. So anyways, I am Steve Morris. Have a great day.